My name is Kevin Moore. I'm a product manager on the Flutter and Dart teams at Google, working mostly on our web story. The web is pretty cool, right? It started as a democratized way to access linked text. Fast forward past images and video, and now we have a ubiquitous application platform, letting everyone access powerful experiences with just a URL. The Flutter team is excited to contribute to this amazing ecosystem. And our users are excited too. We've seen the total number of domains deploying Flutter more than double in the last year. We hope that the features we are shipping today and in the near future will continue our growth. In this video, I will talk about three new things that you can use right now in Flutter 310. I also want to give a sneak peek at what's coming next. Let's dig in. I'm going to highlight three improvements we've made since Flutter 3.7, starting with application load time. The number one request we've received from developers is that they want their Flutter web apps to load faster. The load time of most Flutter web apps is dominated by the total number of bytes that need to be downloaded to get the application started. Two of the biggest components are often CanvasKit and fonts. First, CanvasKit. This is the open source Skia library that we compile to WebAssembly to serve as the base rendering layer for your Flutter web app. We used to use the pre-packaged CanvasKit WASM file provided by the Skia team, but we noticed there were several things we could do to optimize the binary for only the features needed by Flutter Web. We also did some additional work, leveraging features that are unique to Chromium browsers. We expect most users to see the Canvas Kit download size cut in half. Next is fonts. In an application, we usually think of fonts as being used for human-readable text. But Flutter also uses fonts to represent application icons. By leveraging the type information we get from the Dart compiler, we can determine which icons are being used in an icon font and create a special purpose version that excludes all of the unused glyphs. In the counter application, for example, the size of the material icon font using standard web compression drops from over 400 kilobytes to less than 10 kilobytes. What does this mean for your web application? In one simulation, we've seen the total load time of the standard counter app drop by over 40%. This is just the start of our work on performance. We plan to continue to invest here. So with Flutter 3.10, web applications load faster. But they also integrate better with traditional web experiences. One of the most powerful features of the web is composition, linking and embedding resources in different formats and from different sources to build something better. You've been doing it with images and videos for years. Now you can do it with a Flutter application. In previous versions of Flutter, your web app took up the entire browser screen. You could host it in an iframe to mix content, but the JavaScript interop was a little tricky. With Flutter 3.10, we've added element embedding. You can now host the Flutter web app in an arbitrary element. This gives you more flexibility to combine content and make JavaScript communication much easier. In the simple case, configuring your Flutter app to run in an element is just one extra line in your Flutter configuration. So here we see the standard Flutter counter app. It works just like you expect. I can click on it but you see it's in a window actually embedded in an Angular application. We can open up the sidebar and maybe change the counter clicks. And we'll see that values are being synchronized between the JavaScript in the Angular app and the Flutter instance. In fact, we can change the type of app we're looking at, maybe do some text input, either in JavaScript or HTML. And maybe we can even add some effects. So let's resize the window add a shadow, and maybe even a mirror effect. And to go one step further, let's spin the UI. You can see here, I can still continue to enter data in the Flutter app, and it works great even with a 3D spin. The sample code for this app will be available on the linked blog post. And one more thing. The notion of integrates better goes beyond what end users run. We've also been working with our friends in Firebase to provide better integration with Flutter Web. The Firebase CLI tool now includes preview support for detecting and deploying Flutter Web apps to Firebase hosting. So that's how Flutter Web integrates better, with existing web content via element embedding and with tools from our friends at Firebase. Now let's talk about how Flutter Web shines brighter. Flutter Web has a tricky job. 
We want to allow developers to provide both the best of Flutter and also the best of the web. We've talked already about the work we're doing to make the web experience better. But what about improving the set of Flutter features available on the web? This is shader code. It allows amazing visual effects that can run with great performance on modern graphics hardware. We've supported shaders in Flutter for a while, but only on native platforms. With Flutter 3.10, shaders can now be run on the web. Let's look at a demo. This proof of concept imagines the launch screen for a game. Notice the pulsing orb and the glitched out title. These are separate fragment shaders running in this web app. You'll notice the orb changes size as my cursor gets closer to it. It also changes color as I change the game mode. This code sample runs great on native mobile and desktop platforms, and now the web, without any code changes. Check out the linked blog post to find the code sample. For Flutter 3.10, web experiences load faster with smaller asset sizes. Web experiences integrate better with element embedding and better support from Firebase. And web experiences shine brighter with access to GPU accelerated shaders. Now that we've covered what's available in Flutter 3.10, let's take a look at what's coming next for web support. WebAssembly has been around for a relatively short amount of time, but it's had a big impact on the web and beyond. It powers Google experiences like Maps and Earth and libraries like TensorFlow.js. Flutter has been using WASM for a while via the CanvasKit module I mentioned earlier. CanvasKit is a WASM module compiled from the Skia graphics library written in C++. Until now, Flutter's web support has compiled the Dart code that makes up the Flutter framework, packages and plugins, and your Flutter application into JavaScript. We've been excited to see if we could improve the performance and fidelity of your Flutter web app by compiling the Dart code to WebAssembly instead. But Dart is a garbage collected language, and WebAssembly has not had good support for garbage collection. Until now. WASM Garbage Collection, or WASM GC, is a new feature being added to the WebAssembly standard. There are near stable implementations in the Chromium and Firefox browsers, and the Dart and Flutter teams are building on this new feature to bring your Flutter web app to WebAssembly. Our WASM work has three goals. First, shrink the load time of your application. Second, make frame rates faster and more reliable. And third, improve the runtime consistency between native apps and the web. We also want to support trivial fallback to JavaScript on browsers that don't yet support WASM GC. Our plan is for production deployments to include both a WASM and a JavaScript compilation that will be selected at runtime. And while some migration may be required for packages and plugins that use native web features, we are hopeful that most applications will have to do little or nothing to target WebAssembly when this feature is ready. We're back to the game launch screen we showed earlier. If I open up the network tab in Chrome, you'll see that instead of a JavaScript file for our main Dart script, we're loading main.dart.wasm. So this code is actually compiled to WASM GC. It's running on Chrome, currently with flags. And if you want to try it out, you can check out the links in the blog post on this video. We're excited to announce a preview of Flutter WASM support at Google I.O. 2023. Depending on when you watch this video, the details may have changed. So please check out flutter.dev slash WASM for the latest. And that's our update for Flutter Web. In Flutter 3.10, faster downloads, element embedding, and shaders are now available on the web. And we're excited for you to try out our WebAssembly preview. Thanks. Mm -hmm.